Hey guys, Danny Bossa from the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. Hope you guys are all doing well. It's a lazy Sunday over here. Um, wanted to do a really super short video uh, in response to a lot of messages I get uh, in regards to patients informing me that their physicians only measure total testosterone and do not measure SHBG, which is sex hormone binding globulin, uh, in order to calculate free testosterone levels. For those of you who have SHBG measured and total testosterone measured, you can just do a quick Google, Google search uh, for a free testosterone calculator. You enter your total testosterone, SHBG, and it will calculate your free testosterone. By the way, calculating free testosterone via uh, a calculator will provide you a much more reliable indication of your free testosterone versus using the direct free testosterone labs that a lot of you get. So uh, for those of you who have physicians that are only measuring total, uh, send this video to them. So, physician, you cannot dial in a guy with total testosterone only. It's, it's impossible. I know you think you can, you can't. I'm going to give you a perfect example. We're going to take two guys. Both of them are same height, same weight, same level of fitness, same age, and they both have a total testosterone level of 1,000 nanograms per deciliter. You would assume right off the bat that they probably both feel pretty similar, and that assumption could not be further from the truth. Why? Well... Let's say one of the guys has a sex hormone binding globulin of 8 nmol, and the second guy has an SHBG of 80. Um, well, what difference does that make? Well, if you calculate free testosterone for the guy with 8, that would provide him with a free testosterone level of 37 nanograms per deciliter versus the guy with 80 SHBG will only give him a 13 nanograms per deciliter. I can guarantee you that the guy with the 37 and nanograms per deciliter of free testosterone is going to feel a hell of a lot better than the guy with 13. Most of the people that we deal with that are considered optimized, that are symptom-free, have their free testosterone levels. I mean, not all of them, there's always exceptions, but the vast majority of them will have levels of at least 25. So the guy with the free testosterone of 13, due to his high SHBG, would likely require a doubling of dose to get him closer to there. Versus the guy at 37 will probably be feeling pretty good. Now, when I say, say pretty good, that will also det be determinant on ideal frequency of injection. A guy with a low SHPG will not do well on weekly shots. So if you are only measuring total testosterone and giving everyone your cookie cutter protocol of whatever weekly amount, once weekly injections, I am sorry that will not work for a guy with low SHPG. Low SHPG guys are going to hypermetabolize their testosterone, meaning they're going to excrete it much, much faster than a guy with higher levels of SHPG, demonstrating that they will require more frequent injections. Okay? So at the bare minimum, you should not have anybody doing less than twice weekly injections. Once weekly injections is not recommended. Twice it should be considered the bare minimum. It's the gold standard in order to keep serum levels stable. With a low SHBG guy, with a SHBG of 8, twice a week will likely not work, okay? He will have to do every other day, potentially even daily injections. Now, you might think that's a big pain in the ass. I do daily injections myself. I have low SHBG. I load up seven syringes on the first day of the week, and they pop them in my drawer. Every morning, I just pull one out, give myself my quick shot, and I'm done. It's really no big deal. If I want to feel better, i got to do it the right way. Higher SHBG, SHBG guys... They oftentimes just get away with twice weekly and they're just fine, okay? You cannot dial a guy in by total alone. Now, if you don't want to take this advice, that's fantastic. Please measure the SHBG anyway so that when the patient does come to us saying that they don't feel well, at least we can provide them some kind of recommendation because now at least we'll have an indication of their SHBG, we'll have an indication of ideal frequency of injection, and we'll know what their free testosterone is versus just knowing total. If somebody sends me their labs and I say, I only have total, what do I do? I have no idea what to tell them because I don't have the most important information to help them determine their ideal protocol, okay? So please always measure total and SHBG. From there, you can calculate free T, and I promise you, you'll get a lot better success with your patients. All right, have a good one, guys.